Is this the ultimate enduro bike? Well, that was Giant's aim when they set out to completely redesign the all new Rain E. And it's partly why I find myself on the starting grid against the clock at a world level enduro race in Italy. We're going to be asking some really hard questions about this bike and also myself. I'm joking. 12 stages, 3,500 meters of climbing, and 80 kilometers over nine hours awaits. And so with such king-size talk, I find myself here inside the tapes at an Enduro World Series event, which, as it turns out, is one of the toughest on the calendar. But can a bike reared in a race environment cut it in the real mountains away from the tapes? Would it be too highly strung or simply hung too low and slack for a true mountain all-rounder? Having emptied the tank on yet another gruesome power stage, I dreamt of the mountains, mellower rides, smooth single track, and a less pressured pace. Or was I simply delirious? Surely if a bike cannot cut it at race level, then it cannot anywhere, right? But then racing is not everybody's cup of tea, which is why we have traveled north to the skyline here, high above Cron Montana. Equally challenging, equally risky, but without the ticking clock. Although, we have seen a cheeky little bar down in the village. Against a backdrop of the impressive peaks of Wildhorn and Wild Strudel, we set out on a ride less processed by rubber, with shapes of banks and drops yet unseen, a land of ruts, tufts, and terrifyingly steep banks. I'd also like to thank Giant for bringing us here to this knife edge terrain, less loose on this ultra modern EMTB. Uh, right, so what have you got on the menu today then, folks? Um, actually, did you know that famous chef Michel Roux used to live in Cron Montana? Uh, no, the bike, we have got a new frame, a vastly updated geometry, new motor, controls, display, and of course, that 750 watt hour battery. Yes, we've got a lot to talk about. Having momentarily taken the thoroughbred rain out of the race course, it was time to ponder over this new breed. Of the rain, giants say, from e-bike racers to everyday enthusiasts looking to tackle longer rides and improve their capabilities on challenging trails, the new Rain E Plus is the most advanced e-bike ever produced by Giant. The bike has an all aluminium chassis and I really like this because I fully do not believe that you need carbon fibre all the time on an e-mountain bike. Uh, the Maestro suspension delivers 160 millimetres of travel on the rear and the 170 mil fork up front protects you from the beatings that big mountain riding often delivers. Uh, but the big news on this bike is the flip chip, but a bit more of that later. Wandering above Cron Montana is quite different to the constricted space between the tapes and finale. I've come here in search of a different kind of action. Let's face it, not all of us race. Many of us just love to wander in wild places. And with this new 750 battery, the potential has never ever been so good. And of course, that potent new motor. Let's turn our attention now to the motor and it's actually smaller and lighter than previously. Weighs in at 2.7 kilos uh, and also kicks out a little bit more torque, 85 newton meters as opposed to 80 previously. But I think the big news of the motor changes is that because of the reduced dimension, it actually gives you a lot more ground clearance on this bike. The Sync Drive Pro, as it's called, has been developed in conjunction with Yamaha and is made to integrate well with the Maestro suspension. It is a super neat fit. And the all new electronics, sensors, remotes, and battery are all very much giant. 
And a really important factor is the point that the software has been developed by Giant. So this isn't any ordinary PWX3 motor from Yamaha. It's definitely got Giant's touch to it. Joost Backer and his team have really squeezed as much as they can out of the sync drive motor, but still making it easy to ride and understand. And ride we did, enjoying the freedom and unknowns of outside the tape riding. The rain in full command of the equally cutthroat terrain of high alpine pasture. As much as I love the sun and the Mediterranean backdrop, and I do love racing as well, I equally love getting to places such as this. And you know what? The fact that e-bikes now have moved into the larger battery capacities, this Rain E Plus has got the Energy Pack 750 watt hour battery, but you can actually run two different uh, battery capacities. You can actually slot a 625 in there as well. Um, I'm already noticing the extra ground clearance, which has been allowed by that motor uh, up in the single track up here above Cron Montana. I have to say, I'm loving this bike. <laughs> This is where it counts, big, horrible, nasty limestone. This will prove what this motor actually has got. Whoa! Oh my God. So we've talked about the new frame, the new motor, the new software, the larger capacity battery, but one area which has changed massively on this new bike are the controls. Now, there are two ways to control the functionality of this Rain E. The first of these is Ride Control Go, and Giant call it nifty. And you know what? I have to agree with them in that respect. It's located in the top part of the top tube, and it controls your mode and also shows you your battery levels via an LED. Um, the great thing about this is it removes the need for any wiring and also display on the handlebar. And I think this is possibly one of the cleanest handlebar brake control top tube areas on any EMTB in the world. You can obviously control those controls manually as well, and you've got five levels of assist. Power, Sport, Active, Basic, and Eco. But it's now time to move to that control unit. Ta-da! And there it is, folks, the remote control Ergo 3. Possibly one of the most stealth control units you'll ever get on any e-mountain bike. It's integrated into the grip. It's a three-button system, and you can actually locate it either to in, either inside or outside of the brake, and it's compatible with all brake types. And you can actually have a personal configuration uh, on the way the buttons work via the Ride Control app. I just want to point out, you can actually run a display on the rain. You can actually have another remote on the right-hand side of your bar. But I'm really happy that more and more EMTB brands are making bikes with uncluttered cockpit areas. Because when you're riding down terrain such as this, you won't really have much time to focus on a display. Don't get me wrong, I think if you're riding on double track terrain, then I think a display is a great way to motivate you on your ride with such things as your heart rate, which you can see. But if you're on big, tough terrain, then I think low profile is the only way to go. Talking of tough terrain, back in Finale, it was becoming a game of survival in the unrelenting rocks at this world level event. And it was here on the merciless transition stages, I found the smart assist or automatic mode a massive help. It is said to maximize the efficiency of battery and rider by always using the right amount of energy, energy which was slowly draining away from me. The Rain E Plus has been developed in partnership with the giant factory off-road race team. Josh Carlson has gone from Enduro Racer to Enduro EMTB Racer. And so with racing in mind, we return to the slopes and the sweat of the Mediterranean. I'm two stages in. That is physical. The state of me. Clock ticks to 6:30. 
six, seven o'clock. I think I'd be able to lift the pint glass. Oh boy. So we've just done uh, four stages at the EWS. Do you know what? I don't think there is anything that compares to putting you and your bike into a competitive environment because there's when you ride in a recreational sort of setting it doesn't quite push you to the same limits you don't know you can never unsettle the bike and your body to the same degree that you can when you're in a big load of limestone trouble and what that actually tells you is it is much there are some good bikes out there what makes a great bike is that combination of geometry, uh, suspension design, suspension tune, and, uh, and of course the motor comes in, I suppose, a little bit when it comes to the climbs, but that is some bike. That is some bike. I'm only halfway through the day. Look at the state of that. Now, some of you might be wondering about the lack of display on this bike. You can actually bolt one on if you need to, but I can assure you the focus of most people's attention while riding this bike will either be the view or, in this instance, the unrelenting track that awaits. Just the rocks keep coming at you. Oh, you can feel the compressions. Now, I love the fact that this bike has actually been through prototyping. You might think that all bikes go through that. Well, no, some are simply made on a computer screen. And also the fact that the prototypes have been made out of aluminium and the final version is in aluminium. All right, now we're a couple of runs into the EWS here in Finale, and I want to talk about the flip chip. Now, a race run is probably not the best time to go fiddling with the geometry of your bike, but this bike, the geometry can be adjusted uh, by around 10 millimeters on the bottom bracket by flipping the chip, which is located on the top linkage. But remember, the changes do not just affect the bottom bracket height, they affect the C tube angle and also the head tube angle. The question is, why would you want to make these changes? Well, we really are talking fine tuning here, but you could say that for tighter, slower tech, you could opt for a high setting, which will give you slightly faster steering and a better climbing position. Whereas the lower position is ideal for faster terrain and better cornering. The lower bottom bracket will also put that front wheel slightly further forward, which will make the bike better for fast, techy terrain. And overall, it'll make it more stable, but only as stable as the rider. The mixed wheel size on this bike has been done to deliver better balance, control, and rollover capabilities. The smaller 27.5 rear wheel has been possible by way of the smaller motor. This means they've tightened the rear by 19 millimeters of the previous bike, making this one a lot more nimble, but still maintaining a good balance for climbing. I'm really glad to see that they've not over tightened it, shall we say. And so it was that after over nine hours of unrelenting action on merciless terrain, I rolled up to the last stage late in the afternoon, me and my pony now back inside the tape. It had been one of the hardest days on two wheels, and so as I spun the rain up the final slopes with my heart beat in the red, it was reassuring to know that this bike, equally at home in the hills, had never missed a beat. Thank you, my friend.